Thank you very much. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. I have really, really enjoyed these, these days and time to just, just sit up and uh, down and think and have discussions. And uh, it's my great pleasure now to be the last keynote and I have listened very carefully to my, my colleagues. Uh, I am a professor of teacher education at the University of Lapland. I'm also you are the chair on education for social justice and diversity. I think that is the title. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, I the you are the thematic network on teacher education for social justice and diversity plus the UNESCO Unity Network for the same themes. So we have this circumpolar network, and then we have also. Uh, colleagues um, around the red globe. So New Zealand, Australia, Ethiopia, Latvia, UK, obviously, Scotland, England, and, and, and so on. And because a couple of people have been asking me about the Sea Arctic Climatic Network, in the next slide I have a couple of tips that you can have a, a look at before I go to the, to the next slide. Steps there. So we have website, we have Facebook, please uh, come if you are interested in the things. I think that this event will be there at some point. We have Instagram and also the YouTube channel and the short conversations <coughs> were published in that YouTube channel. Uh, uh, I'm not into social media, I'm just uh, don't, don't do that, decided a few years ago, so I'm not aware what they would get. Facebook has that. But please have a look. And, and yes, we have the website, and it should work, and it will work. Great. And um, there you see the both networks so of Arctic and UNESCO Unity. And what might be interest of you is these resources. And we have a lot. We have uh, webinars, recordings, we have videos, we have publications, and, and pre previous publications uh, there. A couple of policies, these are actually policy papers. This is the UNESCO uh, World Higher Education Conference last summer. These two, our network um, submitted three, and two of those three were, uh, were, uh, were accepted, so I'm very, very proud of that. And then we have been also doing work with, our, with the Arctic Council. So when we talked yesterday about the policy level, we can, can have access to that. But, but this is just uh, for you to kind of, if you are interested, we try to do most of our things open access, as far as possible. And with the, uh, with the corona pandemic, pandemic. It's actually quite good because we had lots and lots of money for traveling which we couldn't use. So we have published an open access book for Springer and it just came out uh, in a published ver a printed version yesterday but it's all online and it's uh, a news piece in our website if you want to have a, have a look for that. So that was just um, uh, if you are interested. Uh, but now to the business. So teacher education or education in general, I like to think that teacher education uh, is kind of the keystone for educational sciences in general because teacher education brings all those, all those different aspects of educational sciences together. And my first question for myself and maybe also to you is that <coughs> education for who and where? So place and people, as we have been discussing here. And this is the city of Rovani, my place. I've not born there. I born uh, uh, south South Finland. Rovani is located at the Arctic Circle, so lots of tourists come come there. Lots of British tourists come there uh, to see. <laughs> who is uh, our neighbor? My, my house is two kilometers away from that the place where the tourists oh, are. <laughs> That's a uh, kind of touristic Rovaniemi, which is um, known all around the world. 
And sometimes uh, we would like to see, for example, Rovanin seen as a university or educational city, but we are this uh, very exotic uh, fairy tale Santa Claus city. Mm -hmm. um, we have more reindeer than people mm -hmm. in Rovanin. It's the geographically the biggest city in Europe. And this is from the Second World War, where when the Ger German soldiers left the city, they burned down everything. And that is still in discussions and in the history of the city a lot. Weekly, I have discussions with people. Okay, okay, what was that? Was not burned. That, that is the one building that was not burned. Okay, this side of river. Okay, are you original or written? We are original. Even our houses were not burned. Mm. And the story is how people uh, uh, escape uh, across the river, the Tornio River, to Haparanga, and and so they own city in flames. So this is kind of uh, things that people usually know about Rovani. And then, and you can start to think about curriculum, the local curriculum, around these things if you like. But then there are... So the where is the centre. This is uh, Lapland. Uh, and the Arctic Circle is here, yeah, the big star is. And the big star is Rovaniemi, that's the capital of Lapland. And, uh, and the, some other big stars are is, is, is Hikittila uh, and then Inari. They are big things in Lapland. They are touristic places, lots of people go there during the wind time. And then we have small, very small places, like Tervola is not in the center in any way, even though it's only 40 kilometers away from Rovaneni, and Kittila is 200, but Tervola is something that is not included in the center. So, and Litornio also, it is somewhere here, not far away from Rovaniemi, but it's not in the center. But Inari, which is 350, is very much well center of uh, Lapland. So the geography doesn't help us with this. So uh, the um, distances between the places are not the answer here. And the ruralness or long distances um, are not uh, measured by kilometers. Because uh, if we think about kilometers, Tervola is actually it's a, uh, it's a nearly part of Rovaniemi, but it's still far away. Mm -hmm. And people from Rovaniemi, they never go to Tervola. <laughs> <laughs> so if they go to uh, somewhere else, they must stop there for, for <laughs> gas, but that's, that's <laughs> But we often go to Kittila in our very often. I have been, I think, twice in Kittila and twice in Inari for the last 10 months. And then I kind of, and, and, and Utsuyoki there, up there, uh, is, is a border community with no way, no way, and, and that's there for a reason, because then I started to think about the person who lives in Utsuyoki. What kind of, what is center in that maybe young, young person's life? So Len. Len is the young person who is living in Utsjoki, and in his life he is in center, or, or in her life. They are in center in their lives. So what is then uh, the important, what is center for Len? Rovaniemi, not mentioned. It's here, far away, nothing very exciting. Maybe he, she has to go there for study, but maybe uh, choose some, something from Norway. And Tara is actually in Norway. It's the Utsjoki and Tara, it's very, they're very close together. And I think that the Lenny's friends are from Tara, from Norway. And then, 
the young people there, they have local and local, local friends and their friends are living maybe in Canada, maybe in Australia, wherever. And this is sent her from her to her donkey. And when we look at the educational system and administration in Lapland, if you go back to this, the previous one, it, uh, this is the picture here. So uh, Lenny is not included in this picture, I think that means that it's all in here, here she is, she might be something like here. But in, in their world, they are the same. And this is again something that well, maybe this is an answer for the discussion of what should we teach about in teach education about the locality and context and people and places. <coughs> Instead of looking at geography, we might look at the people and, and different ways of living, for example, in Utsuki. There are many ways of earning living also in Utsuki. Okay. And um, then I just, uh, I was yesterday thinking when Paul said that is education for, is policy for education or is education for policy making? And I thought, okay, we need a reality check. So what education is for? And just to remind us, this is what education is for. To be honest, this is our history. And still, <coughs> for example, yesterday we were talking about the policy in Scotland. So the Policymakers and taxpayers are <coughs> paying our work, so they are they have a say what we do in any case. To be honest, and uh, years ago I was uh, collecting memories about starting school. I lived in Australia and collected about hundred <coughs> narratives about starting school, and this is the memory of an an um, indigenous person who started school in Australia in 1940. So that's not that far away in the history. High school teachers and they say, oh, you never get anywhere, you're going to be domestic for the rest of the And I wonder what the hell domestic was. And he used to be in the cookhouse all the time, in the cook cooking room. That's where we stayed. He used to do washing up in pantry eating and cooking and all oh, having a lovely time but learning anything, not learning a thing. And this is if we, when we yesterday was thinking that what is actually in our table, uh, what is it? Yeah. inclusion and who, who is included and how, how do we include things. These people were included in education system, but they, but they were not included in the, in the learning process. They were told that, that or, or this person was told, okay, who will be a domestic the rest of your life? Why bother? And that is a kind of warning sign that the, the person was 70 when I recorded this. And this happened when he, she was um, 12, 13, and how clearly she recalled what the teacher had said. And that is also somebody talked about fear of saying things mm -hmm. yesterday when we were working with the trees. Um, it's a thing to take seriously. Mm -hmm. What do you say because our student teachers remember and it's for us. <laughs> also, then, uh, if we think that. This was the past of teacher education, and I think that the policy was for education, but now because we are professionals and we do research, we have policy impact that we actually can have can affect the policy. It's I think that we should and we need to do. So if you if we change the game 
and we need to tell this also the policy makers that now we are changing the rules actually here. So it used to be so that policy is for education, but now if we change it, then we say, that, okay, education is for policy making. And uh, these are the things that we were talking, uh, we have been talking here, but this is not from our discussion here. This was actually created um, seven years ago in our thematic network uh, get together meeting or seminar where we thought that what is teacher education for life? We have been th uh, thinking here that what, what, what are we doing our job actually? And there were the uh, diversity, creative digitalization, which was mentioned at some point. Yes, very, very important. Respecting uh, uh, research in form, sustainable, Transform transformation was very powerful uh, for, for life, for respect, uh, for empathy, for justice, for peace. These things. So, and when we, this, this takes us back to the first day we were talking about uh, what is the goal of education? So, what are the achievements? we are pushing the, our student teachers to do, or what is the school for, what is the education for. Maybe it's the way to find a good place, uh, find a way in your life, live it in, uh, in harmony with other people and with, with nature. And in that event, we then created uh, what, uh, our, our sentence <coughs> or the message, so what we actually want to do <coughs> is co-creating, and this co-creation means that we take, uh, uh, we invite somebody was, it was the first day then we were talking about who is teacher educator, who do we count as teacher educator, I can't remember who it was, but that was interesting. So we invite people, the community, kids, parents, policy makers to actually create with us. Uh, and we do all we do that with them, or, uh, or bring different ideas to the table that what to think about. Culturally responsive, active pedagogies, and transformative teacher education. So transforming is here. We were uh, we quite um, uh, purposefully uh, decided this very powerful work. And we want want to transform and. Um, I'm, I'm becoming to think I kind of want to blow up the whole thing <laughs> and start it from the scratch because we have so much what the teacher education used to be for that we still have that. so much and that's why we go to, uh, go to places to uh, rural uh, areas and, and try to bring up and, and catch up and do them because we are doing exactly the things that in the couple of photos, so that they, the teachers enable agency. Of course, teacher agency is something that is needed, but the agency of the people who are living there, the agency for communities, for children and young people, and sustainability in the widest form. Of course, the sustainable ecologies is important, but also sustainable communities. So how? How we do this? And I try to think that we always start from the easiest thing. So when we do <coughs> only the easy things, uh, or we, when we always start with the easy things, uh, we only have easy things. So we can start with the easiest thing. And here we come to the, what I, I was commenting on the other day about the, what level, level are we talking about? And here in the middle is kind of the systematic, the systematic uh, way or, or, uh, or thinking that, okay, what are the levels we are working at? So there is this written policy for the churches. And that is, uh, and this is the society, and this is uh, the, this side, so from your side. And then this is a uh, kind of 
teacher, teacher educator thinking. So more situational and that is more general. So written policy for teacher education. And in the society we have history and traditions and we have ideologies which are affecting what kind of written policy we have. And then an individual teacher educator thinks that why do I work as a teacher, a teacher educator? Why do I do this work? I, I, I need to consider, take this policy, written policy. Um, I, I need to know it because if not, then I, I will not that will have my job. Who are my students, really? And how are they related to this written policy? And then we come to, for example, the University of uh, Lapland or University of Aberdeen, and we have the <coughs> policy documentation and we interpret it. Interpret it. How, okay, this is the one, how do we do, how we do this? So we, there we have the institutional culture of doing things. And this is, um, I might say that the written policy level um, uh, is not the easiest thing here. It takes time, it's worth of taking time, but it's not the easiest thing. But you become, this is actually in our hands, this, uh, this second one. And maybe changing institutional culture is not the easiest thing, but, but not the impossible. Then we implement it in our classes, in our lectures, in our courses we implement what we have interpreted from the written policy. And then what we all have, things that are affecting this, that uh, the situation, where am I coming to this from? From where, what, how was my morning tonight, today? today? That affects on how I, I uh, talk to, to students. And also, so type of that. where are my students coming? What is their situation? And then, of the context type, what kind of student cohort we have? What do you think about that? And the context where we are working. And then, experience policy is the, well, how this written policy finally ends to our teacher education for the student teachers and what they experience from it. And this should be, like, I, there are arrows both ways, so this should be from experience back to the written policy. And now if we think that what is the easiest thing to do in this? As a teacher educator, I think that it's this. <laughs> this is what I do. I implement the policy. I'm the one who is the working with the students. So why not start with this? Work with this. And then uh, when we have some good pilots, some good, uh, uh, some people who have, okay, I make the, I do this and this, and we heard from Iceland that they have this 10 ECTS credit uh, for local studies, how you call it. Oh, wow, what a good example. Mm -hmm. So, once we have good examples, then we might go back to this, okay, how we actually understand the policy, and once we have changed our interpretation, then we go to policy makers. Okay, this is what we kind of think. Yeah. And by doing little things, and it often doesn't take a lot, uh, then it's actually started to change the whole whole picture, the, the different ways. But it's good to remember these sides here, mm -hmm. so that if something does not work, it might not be your implementation of things, but it might be the context where you are, or it might be the um, where you were coming from to this. So maybe you need to broaden as a teacher to get a broad our understanding, or maybe the students. We need to know a bit more about our students to actually make make this work. Then um, uh, just to and uh, we, when Finland was chairing the Arctic Council, and this was actually also in your reading list <laughs> yesterday, yesterday, we got an email that the documents for today. Uh, we had a project 
on teacher education and, and uh, one of the products was the position statement on Arctic pedagogy. And you can read the uh, thing that, that was made in an international cooperation uh, within the thematic network and also this is a policy level paper because that's, that was an Arctic Council paper which, uh, and the, this <coughs> position statement was accepted by in the ministerial in um, May 2019 or something like that. So this has been accepted and sometimes you might like to remind your policymakers that hey, <laughs> this was accepted. And I, from this paper you can read it, uh, it's available on the website, but I, I picked up the entitled, entitlements for teachers and teacher educators. For teachers are entitled to have a teacher education which prepares them to promote their students' active citizenship in global communities. And this is again then on to-do list for us as teacher educators. Uh, teachers are entitled to have teacher education which promotes their understanding of the connection of cultural language identity building as well as their skills to provide culturally sensitive education. So this is what we have been talking about. And they need to have access to good quality digital means because that is one way to make equal access and opportunities and, and possibilities to all. And then we as teacher education institutions, we are entitled to include northern sociocultural themes in our programs. And you have done that in Akureyri. And we are in the University of Lapland taking baby steps with this, which is frustrating, really, for, for me, because I'd like to see this more. But we are in the process of doing that. And uh, we are entitled to provide future teachers with skills to offer a culturally appropriate education by knowing their students, uh, not in the superficial way, but really knowing their students, and provide Northern experience for future teachers. And not the North program is one quite good possibility. Mm -hmm. and, and also doing some maybe some field trips or going to places, doing the things, because it's very different to read something and, and just uh, go there and, and feel it. <coughs> so I think that, yes, these are my references. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Yeah, I just